Hello, Aries. Welcome to your monthly reading for November 2023. This is for Aries and Aries Rising. And if you're new to my channel, I do a traditional cult across spread. I also use astrology and my guides to help bring a lot more clarity to get more specific and detailed with your reading. Aries, I do this because you know I love you. I want you to feel like it's a personal reading, as if we're here one-on-one, -on -one, rather than a general spread. Lastly, I use astrology because it brings a lot more depth to your readings. I also turn off and mute everything on my computer, and I did not. So there we go. Now you won't get uh, interrupted. And you know what's really uh, uh, fun about that is that that is probably my cue to tell you, congratulations. <laughs> You just made it through some of the biggest, biggest thing. Like we just came out of a really heavy retrograde uh, a period. Then we had our eclipses last month. Uh, so congratulations. You made it. Take a bow. You're in a good place now. Uh, there's a lot of changes happening in your life. Um, it's almost like there's a whole brand new you. All right. So I want you to think about that. I want to think about I want you to think about what's next. And this is your like. Truman Show moment, right? This is, um, you know, do you remember, do you see that movie at the end when Jim Carrey is at the door and then he walks through on the other side and everyone around the world cheered and they cheered? That's you right now, okay? You're moving into this new huge stage in your life, okay, after these eclipses. And if you don't feel it right away, as you know, as I explained in my eclipse video, this is a progression. You're going to start feeling things moving in a whole other direction, especially with the North Node having moved into your sign in July. There's a lot of, of, of partnership activity that's happening for y'all. A lot of partnership activity, okay, whether you've entered a new partnership in business or in, you know, love or, uh, you know, taking it to the next level or, you know, thinking about uh, uh, new types of partnerships. Listen, there's a lot of activity around that. Now, the reason I bring up the Truman Show is because we don't know what happens after he walks through that door. And that's for you to decide right now. You are entering this new phase in your life. So I want you to really think about what is it that you want next? Okay, so these eclipses really kind of, they gave you this nudge. They gave you this nudge. And another good reason why I bring up the Truman Show in this scene is because Neptune is really active this month in November. All right, Neptune is all about imagination, creativity, even dreams, your dreams. Like, so take advantage of that. This is going to be a very interesting month, remember. Uh, so uh, if you are new to my channel, after I do your spread, stick around. I break it down week by week. I tell you everything that's going on this month, okay? Broken down every week. I tell you the good days and the bad days. And I'm not going to lie. There are some really challenging days this month. Uh, if you saw my three-month ahead forecast, I said November is, you know, out of the last three months of this year. It's the most like, oh, like what's going on? And it's because of us just coming out of eclipses. But there are other aspects that are happening, especially for you Aries where I want you to just be on guard because your ruling planet uh really great placements but then other placements where it's a little bit challenging okay a little bit challenging we do have a full moon closing this month at the end of the month and it's in Gemini so there's going to be a lot of activity there um you remember all these uh, a lot of these aspects especially the moon cycles uh there are there are cycles so uh we had a new moon in Gemini back in June 17th June 17th, 18th, because it took place around midnight. So think about what you started around that time. Think about what you started. Okay, so I hope you have your notebooks out because there's a lot of dates I'm going to point out here. But uh, I'm very excited for you. I'm very excited for you because if you haven't already, it's time to let go other things that are not serving you well okay if the, it and and this is also like you uh, some things may have already been eclipsed out of your life uh but the fact that neptune is very active neptune is in pisces your 12th house okay the subconscious so there could be a lot of deep diving for y'all really really unrooting things that have been holding you back uh on a deep psychological level too all right maybe even the way that you see things uh your perception of things even you know uh pessimistic thinking as well uh there's you know i there sometimes and i'm just gonna you know as as an analogy you know sometimes i get comments where people uh will leave comments well 
this thing that happened sucked and then and why isn't this changing why isn't this changing and uh this sucked and this is horrible and so i always want to remind you everything is made of energy down to the molecular level down to the thoughts in your head down to what you are actually expressing so if you're focusing on all the negative rather than saying okay this happened but i'm going to take action to make this better or i'm actually going to do this to make this better it flips everything okay and again neptune is really at play this month all right uh so uh and saturn goes direct actually that's going to be a relief uh for a lot of y'all uh, but it's it, it's uh it's going to be nice it's going to be nice for a lot of y'all because you could have been in your head a lot the past few months aries so with that said this is the shortest intro ever Let's let's get started. Let's see what's going on for you, Aries, for November 2023. Again, this is for Aries and Aries rising. If you want to read for your moon, your Venus. Oh, I would read for your Venus. Actually, I read for both. Uh, but Venus, because Venus is moving into Libra. Venus is it, and it's domiciled in Libra. It's got to be great. That's going to happen. When is that? That's that's on the, the like on the eighth. OK, and then actually on the ninth, Mercury's moving into Sagittarius. That's very, you know, Mercury and Sagittarius is like it's in its detriment. But we'll talk about it later. OK, because it's affecting you and your it's, it's your ninth house. OK, so again, your belief system, the way that you see things, uh, your philosophies. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Aries, let's see what's going on for you. And again, if you are new to my channel, um, I do leave all the key astrological dates uh, in the description box, if you do want to follow along, um, and it's always a good idea to take notes. All right. For, for these days, just so you know, when to take action and what to do, what not to do, uh, Aries. Um, like I said earlier, I do a traditional cult across spread. It really gives the best overview here. If we need to pull clarifiers, we will. Okay. We will. And, uh, as you know, I break it down week by week. I pull a lot more cards after your spread and Aries. I'm going to let you know now you're good. You're good. I love what I'm seeing here. And you know, just the energy of your spread. Um, I know there's always such a weird thing to say, but I energetically feel it is wow. This is good. Actually, when you think about your last reading, oh my gosh, you, you're, you're moving into some power. You're moving into some power, but I love absolutely love what i see here um you did get the four of cups in your past okay so this is great because it's in your past and uh looking at your entire spread here it's like a, a big message coming through is like a lot of y'all have had uh, and i'm not trying to say this in a way where it's like uh i'm not trying to like get your goat or anything here but You've gotten over some things where you know it was like ego checks, okay? And the only reason I say that is, well, two reasons. One, you got the four of cups, okay? Secondly, uh, as you know, Mars is your ruling planet and it's in Scorpio. And when Mars is in Scorpio and Mercury is in Scorpio and the moon is in Scorpio. And do you know what I mean? Like when we had all this uh, activity in Scorpio last month, uh, especially the last few weeks of October with those eclipses. Oh, my goodness. A lot of egos at play. A lot of egos at play. So it could have been like you could have had like this big uh, ego check. Like, OK, I can't act this way. This is not getting me anywhere. I have to like, you know, appreciate the things that I have. Uh, I have to work with the things that I have. I have to uh, raise my energy level, um, have some gratitude. But also there is a sense of a lot of y'all that were just like completely uh, 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 let's let's not beat around the bush here. Just really unsatisfied with, uh, a, you know, maybe career, maybe love. Maybe remember partnerships was like a big thing for you. But the north node moving into uh, uh, your sign. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, the south node moving into the seventh house. There was a lot of changes happening for y'all, but it was uh, a, just a lot of like you really thinking about like some of y'all down to your identity like 
how do I want to be seen? What is it? You know, like things like that. So uh, I really love uh, this because uh, you and it depends on what day you watch this reading. This card came up in your past. So if you haven't already have those moments of gratitude, have those moments where if you feel, you know, maybe even like bored in a certain job and or a relationship or, you know, like just something that you're just like, yeah. Where is that spark? Find that spark that's going to make you feel excited and alive and just ready to get going like a jack in a box, like boom, right? That's how you want to feel. Oh, maybe, uh, well, for some of y'all, yeah, y'all are Aries. Come on. Y'all are fiery. You got the queen of cups uh, and the heart of your spread. I really love this. Uh, keep in mind, this is a monthly reading. Come on. That's good. That's good. Okay. Queen of Cups. So loving. She's such a loving queen. All right. She has so much love to give. She has all this like emotional depth. Uh, she's in touch with her emotions. Uh, she uh, knows the name of everybody in her kingdom. Right. That's how loving she is. It doesn't matter if it's the emperor. It doesn't matter if it's a farmer. She loves everybody, but there's a lot of self-love here too. So there's a lot of things that, you know, coming after the four of cups, you could have learned, okay? You could have learned from a lot of things that have happened in the past that put you in a place where you are feeling a lot more comfortable, all right? Uh, also of a lot more intuitive as well. And you're going to find that this month, okay? You're going to find that happening again. I said, this is a month where Neptune, and you know I never talk about Neptune. Um, <laughs> Neptune is actually very active this month, all right? So you're you're going to feel that a lot of intuitive energy. Uh, you're going to love that because she is the most intuitive queen. Um, so I really love this for you. You did get the magician, but you got the magician in your challenge area. So here's the thing. Some of y'all this month are going to be on this quest to really, really think about what you want. Okay. And really take action for that. I really want you to take action for that. Remember, Mercury is in Scorpio for the first half. I got, well, for the first week, okay? For the first week of the month, you still have that energy with Mars in Scorpio as well. Mercury in Scorpio is like no filter. Remember that? Uh, so it's intuitive energy too, okay? So uh, I really want you to take action. The Magician is all about taking action, but... Looking at your entire spread, some of y'all just may not know. Uh, uh, you could, there's okay, so two things one, you could have gotten what you wanted, all right, whether it's a partnership, whether it's relationship, and work again, work or business or uh, career, uh, which is actually like a really big thing for y'all. Career is like a huge thing for you, at, uh, with, with Pluto being in Capricorn, Pluto having gone direct in Capricorn in your 10th house of career. Uh, leadership, public recognition, success and whatnot. But it, even still, some of y'all may be uh, not really, it's almost like it's so new to you. It's You have to really like, what is it? Clamp on it, clamp onto it, okay? Uh, but then some of y'all still just maybe not know what you want this month. Just remember, trust your intuition. You will, okay? And then again, with the magician being in your challenge area, some of y'all just may not be taking the action that you need to be taking. Um, I really want you to take action. At the end of the day, the magician can manifest whatever he wants, okay? And he has that power, okay? But in order to manifest, you're actually, you have to take action. You can't just wait for things to happen. You have to take that action for things that you want, all right? Now, remember that we are still Mars, your ruling planet is in Scorpio. Uh, and then that's going to be until like the last weekend of this month. Um, and we're going to, you know, we're still in, we're in Scorpio season, right? For the first, first half of the month. So take advantage of that. That's your eighth house. Okay. That's transformation. That's, uh, you know, that's uh, yeah, life cycles, rebirth. Um, but it's also other people's income and resources. That could be a big thing for you, all right? That could be, you know, whether it's your partner income, there could be activity around that. There could be activity around, like, inheritance, bonuses, commissions, paying off debts and whatnot. But even still, uh, you did get the Knight of Wands, which I love because it does look like a lot of y'all are just on this mission, okay? You are on this mission. Uh, a lot of y'all are actually you know maybe thinking about traveling and if you do traveling is such a force of good and i really want you to do that all right yeah a lot of y'all are going to be thinking about traveling this month um 
uh, or even like planning travel, but even still, you know, uh, the, it's going to be a big thing, especially when we move into Sagittarius season at the end of the month, uh, because that is your ninth house, right? Of, 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 of travel, uh, of long distance travel. Uh, but even still, uh, there is a sense of like whatever trip you go on, it could be this transformational thing for you. All right. Travel is always for a force of good. I mean, you go to the mountains, you see this breathtaking view and that can change your life like that all right same thing you go to some ocean you go sit, you sit there watch the sunset all these you know it's such an emotional moment for you know what i mean like so keep that in mind oh if you're not thinking about it i would even i would encourage it okay but there is a sense of you just also just really uh laser focused on uh feeling passionate about something this month okay uh again most of y'all it will be career most of y'all uh partnerships in some form as well okay now you also got the wheel of fortune all right and the rootier spread so it looks like there has been looking at this some of y'all just uh, these eclipses possibly put you in this place where you have a uh, your your uh, well your life is changing for sure uh and the wheel of fortune here is it, it it's so attached to karma right uh it, it has you have you're always working with your karma karma's not static okay very huge association with karma but so does saturn all right and saturn as i said is with neptune in pisces neptune is very active this month saturn is going direct the first week of november this is all in your 12th house, all right? So a lot of y'all are really going deep. Uh, a, a lot of y'all actually, and this is a card of luck. It's ruled by Jupiter, actually. Uh, a lot of y'all are actually having these huge transformative moments. Uh, rebirth is a big message coming through. Uh, to, and it, when I say rebirth, in a way where you actually feel passionate and emo like passion and emotion toward this new adventure that you're going on in some aspect of your life that is going to be something to cheer about and celebrate because you got the three of cups in your future so aries you're good you're good okay just you know if you feel like you don't know which direction to go now have those moments go really deep okay go really deep and 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 think about it all right what you want in your life all right it you you have control of your life right you you can take that action and then you see you have all this potential for success and and celebration in your future i really love this for you all right so aries uh this and three by the way Three is all about the birth of new things, all about creation, okay? It's almost like you see the three sisters toasting each other. Come on. It's like they just came up with, like, you know, uh, the idea for uh, chat GBT. They're like, we're going to be uh, trillionaires. They're celebrating. All right, so uh, there is your – it's almost like you are going to be celebrating something new in your life, okay? That is going to have this emotional stability, but there's – underlying message out of all of this it really is your intuition it's your imagination it's your creativity have those juices flowing and you're going to find yourself really really not only feeling empowered but like things happening for you all right so aries let's get to your stuff um aries if you like this reading it would be so great if you like subscribe leave comments it really does actually a, help the algorithm, but B, I love hearing from y'all. I want to know what's going on. And if you're a subscriber, thanks so much for being here. Y'all are amazing. Oh, my goodness. What would I do without you? Um, I wouldn't even be here without you. So I am truly grateful. I really do appreciate it. So Aries, wow. Wow. Okay, so, yep, November is November is a, it, it's an intense month, okay? But it's it, toward the end of it, it's going to be a lot more chill. It's going to be a lot more chill. All right. So uh, do you like that? The hand thing? I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, <laughs> you got the seven of swords. Uh, so, yeah, some of y'all really have to go deep now. OK, seven of swords. It's coming up because there is a sense of you that where you have to actually really go deep and not hide from things. I'm getting a big distraction energy. Some Aries may be distracting yourself, like making excuses as in like, you like for instance like if you do want a promotion you keep pushing it off you're making excuses like 
Uh, now, now it's not the right time. Uh, now it's not the right time. Uh, now it's not the right time. So really be honest with yourself. Really don't like hide from anything. Um, it's, it's, it, again, it's a month to take action, but also just going really deep. Okay. Going really deep. There is someone, by the way, I want, and I want you to know this, all right? Someone's, one of your friends is going to do something really weird <laughs> this month. Um, and it's, it, I don't think it's going to be like a terror. Oh, wow. There's a rainbow outside my window. That's so crazy. I wish I could turn the camera um, so you could see it. That is so cool. I have never. Anyway, that's a sign. That's a sign for you. Aries, that's a sign. I wonder if I can. Uh, okay. Well, just trust me that there's a rainbow. Okay. Outside my window. Um, but. Yeah, uh, there is going to be, so this card is actually ruled by Aquarius. Aquarius is your 11th house. Uh, and this is going to affect Aries rising more than Aries. But uh, 11th house is your social network, your groups you belong to, organizations you belong to. So there is a sense of like, especially, and I'm, remember, I'm going to talk about these aspects that, especially your planets that are coming up, where there could be just some secrets that are revealed or some friend that may do something little or a group you belong to or or you know your community or whatever it is uh just be aware of that uh and you you know trust your intuition in terms of handling that situation the other thing remember that i said the 11th house that that's where it, it's aquarius rules your 11th house uh it's also the house of your hopes and and, and wishes and, and goals and dreams and so again you have to really, really go deep to know what you want, all right? Uh, and don't hide anything. Don't, don't, don't uh, do friend yourself. Don't lie to yourself about anything. Just face the truth now, okay? Face the truth now. Speaking of transformation, this is so significant that the hangman came up in your external factors area for two reasons. One. What did I say? All this activity in Scorpio, uh, in your eighth house right now of transformation, of 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 empowerment, of of of, of rebirth, right? Which is a big thing that's happening for y'all right now. The hangman comes right before the death card, which is all about transformation. He's preparing himself. Okay. So it looks like there is going to be something this month where you're going to have to make some surrender. You're going to have to make some sacrifice to go through this transformation. There is still something that you got to let go. All right. There's still something that you got to let go. And a lot of it, again, I'm not even getting for a lot of y'all. Okay, sure. It's going to be like a partnership relationship or whatnot. But remember, there's so much activity in your 12th house. And that is like a a, a way that you think, a way that you see things, it's time to uh, surrender that, okay? You never want to bring that into, like, new cycles that are happening in your life, right? So, again, if it is, like, pessimistic thinking or if it's, like, doubt, self-doubt, things like that, you do want to make that sacrifice. Now, the second thing that's very, very uh, significant here, the hangman ruled by, wait for it, Neptune. So when I say imagination, creativity, really flex those like muscles, right? Flex those muscles. You got them. And, 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 and that's going to help. That's going to make a lot of the difference, all right? Intuition, like really big because you got the emperors here and the emperors, as we know, is Miss Everything. Miss Universe here. This is a goddess that I hold in my hand. Think Aphrodite. Also, hey, ruled by Venus. Okay. As I said, Venus is leaving Virgo where it's in its fall, moving into Libra. It's domicile. Venus is the ruling planet for Libra. And that's going to happen. What day did I say again? On the 8th. Like, ah, amazing. Love, money, creativity. Come on sex, all of the, everything that you think that Venus represents, uh, you want it all and you can have it all. You just got to let something go. Uh, and, 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 and trust your intuition and just be, and again, I feel like that's going to happen organically for y'all. It definitely will, uh, 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 be very organic for y'all. Now, remember I said Venus is moving into Libra, right? Your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. So again, 
there is a lot of that happening for y'all partnerships relationships love romance but also career uh business um it can also be like a friend uh just think one-on-one right just think on one-on-one relationships but there is a sense of some of y'all could have ended relationships have been or now moving into new relationships or that's all you want right now is this new partnership or relationship maybe you want to leave your job and go for a job that stimulates you and challenges you and makes you feel like i'm home this is it for i love this uh you did get the knight of pentacles in your final outcome you're good you're good uh you got two knights here i love that uh the knight of pentacles is really uh think about like what i said earlier that rebirth energy because the Knight of Pentacles is all about sowing seeds. This is the biggest field in tarot, okay? Planting seeds, sowing seeds, and then reaping the rewards, all right? And so I want you to do that. I want you to do that. There's going to be, and there's this consistency. Uh, he's Virgo, by the way, all right? And so that is your sixth house of everyday activities. But think about Virgo. It's just, Virgo is very, uh, uh, like, pragmatic. And, you know, there's that loyalty, that long-haul commitment energy. He's committed in it to win it. It looks like you are set up for success here. You were set up for success. Uh, and there is something that is happening that is going to be, uh, uh, you know, with Saturn going direct, bringing that stability, like, it's really nice. It's really nice for you. So it looks like you're coming into something that is going to have longevity to it. Um, but again, you have to take that action. Uh you have to take that action, all right? Especially with the magician in your challenge area. But come on, you're great here. You're great. You, you got the Wheel of Fortune, which, by the way, is 10, 1, 0, new beginning, right? So uh, let's let's see what's going on for you. Uh, yeah, you're, I mean, you're you're absolutely good. You just, you have to take a lot of, a little bit more action than normal this month. Um, and I only say that because you're Aries. You, take action all the time you kick off the zodiac wheel all right but it's only with a magician here and again i'm going to talk about your uh, i'm going to break it down week by week so this is what we're going to do now we're going to break it down week by week the first week i hope you got your notebooks out there's a lot happening um the first week i'm only going to bring up one thing and that is on the fourth uh saturn does go direct okay and that it's a big thing because last month Pluto went direct and then next month Jupiter will go direct. So you'll see by the end of this year, whoo, like your things are going to be just like trotty, trotty, trot. I don't even know what that means, but, um, uh, but you know, on the third as well, November 3rd, Venus is going to oppose Neptune. Uh, and this is again, being honest with yourself, being realistic with yourself. Okay. Uh, that's that's a big thing, all right? But Saturn going direct on the 4th is is honestly... Oh, and then on the 5th, if you live here in, in the U.S. and in Canada, we do have, the, like, the daylight savings. Uh, so we're going back in time for an hour. Uh, anyway, let's see what's going on for you, Aries, uh, for the first week of... Ah! The first week of... November. Oh, you got another night. This is your third night. Oh my goodness. The rainbow is gone. But, oh wait, no, it's still there. Bear visibly. It didn't even rain today. Night of Cups. There you go. First week. So, uh, that partnership activity, uh, again, there could be on your mind, could be something that there's movement with, uh, which is really great. But this is what's going to blow your mind, Aries. Knight of Cups is Pisces. You even see all that fish on his armor. Neptune and Saturn are in Pisces right now. Okay, your 12th house. Remember, big month of like imagining 
yeah, the, the, the life that you want for yourself. Being honest with yourself, though, there's uh, there's there's this tendency with, you know, depending on the aspect with Neptune, it could be like things could be a little foggy. Things could be like a little like fantasy versus reality. But, you know, like that is like with on the third, November 3rd, Venus opposing Neptune. That's just really just being honest with yourself. OK, uh, in terms of matters of love and romance and and, uh, you know, uh, 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 beauty, even if you want to think about, you know, everything that Venus represents. But I really love this. This is, you know, he is the knight in shining armor. All right. So he wants to share that cup with somebody. And even if you're not here for business, even if you're not here for career, if you're not here for love, if you're not here for any of that, because I get a lot of messages about that, about like, well, I'm retired and da da da. This is all he just wants to fill his cup. OK, he just wants to be emotionally fulfilled. So you finding some passion and really pursuing it, what is going to fulfill you emotionally at this point? OK, keep that in mind. But that's amazing. I love that. You got three knights. You know, that's where the word chivalry came from, by the way. It is uh, where I think it's old French or old. Yeah, it's old French. Chevalier. Chevalier uh, was a uh, knight rider, and it translated to knight rider in uh, medieval times. Anyway, that is your Jimmy tip for the day. Uh, fact. Now, week two, ugh, prepare yourself. On November 6th, Venus is going to try and Pluto. This is fuego, as the kids say. Fuego. If you are single, you better get GTF you know whatever whatever the acronym is go out there this is come on venus training pluto doesn't happen often all right but it's 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 an amazing day uh especially and it doesn't matter if you're single whether you're in love whether you're with a part uh, this is just a really spicy day i love it i love it and money is a big big thing here too okay money is a big thing here the same day mercury's training neptune all right. That's great because your uh, like creativity could just be like gangbusters at this point. So I really love love the second week because on the eighth, Venus officially enters Libra. We're going to talk about this more in my weekly reading um, on the ninth. Mercury is going to move into Sagittarius. Uh, so Mercury is leaving Scorpio and it's going to be a. Uh, a lot nicer for you because Sagittarius is your BFF, right? Your fellow uh, 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 fire sign, your Romy, your Michelle, whoever. But even at the same time, Mercury in Sagittarius, it's it's in its detriment. So it's not like the best placement. Listen, it's a, it's a silly placement is what it is. It's like whenever Mercury goes into Sagittarius, it's like, kind of goofy for me it's like confusing like things can be a little confusing uh but uh you're still productive it's like uh really big ideas really grandiose ideas that come up uh like w when mercury is in sagittarius uh and it's like enthusiastic but it's like a little scattered it's like you know think about like if you did and have you ever done an escape room it's like that. It's like if you've ever done it for the first time, it's like fun. It's like, oh, my God, like your brain thinks in ways that it has never that, you know, like doing these puzzles and clues like in real like, OK, where's the clue? And you're with your friends and you're giggly and, you know, you're on your like 18th beer and the thing, like everything is just like, whoa. Um, no, I'm joking. Like, <laughs> I don't even think you're allowed to drink in those. Uh, but you're really just forced away uh, to you're forced to think in ways you've never have before so it is like mercury mercury is sagittarius it's like it is it's it's like it's very optimistic but not super organized like the way that you're thinking uh but it's there's like a silly factor to it that that i actually like um i would say also um one of the uh most challenging days of the month is going to be on the 11th, okay? November 11th, all right? And you're going to hear a lot of astrologers talk about this. Mars is going to oppose Uranus. And Mars is your ruling planet, so it's going to affect you, all right? I'm not going to lie. It's going to affect you a lot. 
and it may have to do with uh, arguments around money or finances because Uranus is in Taurus and that is your second house. So uh, just be prepared. There could be some unexpected. Uranus is the planet of the unexpected as well. And so there could be something unexpected that comes up and it could get really explosive. So remember, you know what I say, just be chill. All right. Be chill. Stay frosty and uh, just really go with your gut. Really trust your intuition at this point all right be the better version of yourself now here's what we can expect for aries for the second week of november ah you got the nine of wands all right sagittarius energy by the way um this is really great this card is all about perseverance it's all about like resilience and uh so it looks like there is going to be a point where you're just gonna like be like okay i got this i got this i got this i, I i'm not gonna give up i'm good i'm protecting all my passions nothing's gonna stop me i'm gonna keep going i'm gonna hang in there this is good i really like this all right so there could be uh you know some challenging moments this week and like i pointed out yeah there are uh but at the same time there's some really great moments all right so uh focus on love focus on your super conscious you're gonna be absolutely fine now the third week of uh november ah we have the new moon in Scorpio, all right? So this is almost the culmination of all that Scorpio activity, all right? So it's around this time, and I would even say, and new moons, remember, the energy is, is it's, it's, it literally can last up to six months for here, all right? Uh, it's all about your transformation, okay? So there could be something new brewing around this time. Now, the one thing that I want to warn you about New moons are great, right? New beginnings, new opportunities. On the same day, the sun is going to be opposite Uranus. And so that makes it a little challenging. Uh, Uranus is also, you remember I said bring surprises. So uh, you there could be something really like uh, around this time. Just focus on the things that you want to manifest, Okay. Um, and if things do go a little sideways, just know that like, you know, you're, we're always being tested. All right. It's how you approach these tests, how you take these tests, how you come out of these tests that really matter, that really matter. Okay. Uh, uh, but here's great news. Actually on the 17th, we have not one, not two, but three, three powerful, powerful aspects two of which include Mars. So your ruling planet. So 17th, I would circle this in your calendar. Mars is going to trine Neptune. So the sun is going to trine Neptune too. I mean, this is your imagination, just like whoosh, your creativity, a whole other level. Like you just like the 14th dimension. All right. And on the same day, the sun is going to conjunct Mars. How you like that? So the 17th, absolutely like no argument here. One of the best days of the month. Okay. Uh, you're just going to feel absolutely driven. I mean, remember Mars is uh, your ruling planet. All right. And it is in Scorpio. It's coming after that new moon in Scorpio. So there is going to be uh, something new again that you're going to be really passionate about. Um and it is something that I feel like is just going to like, if you feel like, you know, if things have just been humdrum, like this is like the week where you're just like, whoa, like, yeah. Uh, like you being in a convertible, driving down the PCH, wind blowing in your hair, you got your cool sunglasses on, your dog and the passenger seat, you're like cranked up, uh, uh, violent fans, like you're going to be. You're going to be good. So with that said, let's see what's going on for you, Aries, for the third week of November. What'd I say? You just got the nine of cups. Cup, uh, the card of like complete satisfaction. I say it's the genie in a bottle energy. You even see the young man here sitting like a genie uh this is the wish come true card look at the cu the cups aligned over his head that's a lot of enlightenment like this is 
You're good. You're good. So something that you wanted, okay? You're getting. You're getting. Uh, but just remember uh, that you've got to stay focused. You've got to stay focused on the things that you actually want, the things that you want to manifest. Have that power and know that you do have that power. All right? Keep that in mind. This is all coming with that new, like, the, the third week, okay? Now, on to the last week of the month. Uh, we, oh, gosh. Ah, uh, on the 20th and the 21st. So, on the 20th, the sun is going to sextile Pluto, which is amazing. But on the 21st, Mars, your ruling planet, is also going to sextile Pluto. This is like empowerment to a whole other level. Now, if you are here for career, remember, this is your 10th house we're talking about. A lot of y'all, you know, just looking at what's happening here, a lot of y'all may be getting new jobs, getting promotions, starting your own business. Uh, there's just so much like empowerment energy around these dates. Uh, the 10th house is also fame. Okay. So you could be recognized for, uh, for how amazing you are. Uh, and then on the 22nd, we move into Sagittarius season. Uh, we will talk more about that in the weekly reading. Uh, the other day this month, that I really want you to be careful around is on the 23rd when the sun is going to square uh, Saturn. This is a day where you will definitely be tested. Something's going to be testing. Um, there's a lot of pressure around this day. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, just be patient. Stay determined. Stay cool. Be frosty. Like Snoop. Snoopy, Snoop Dogg, whatever you want to be, you're going to be fine. Again, the sun is going to the the, the, uh, the sun is going to square uh, Saturn. This is going to be very interesting because a lot of it is going to be in your head. All right, because remember at this point the sun has moved into Sagittarius, uh, Sagittarius, your ninth house of spirituality, your belief system, your your philosophies. But Saturn is in your twelfth house, your subconscious. So it could be something like up here. Um, on the 24th, Mars, your ruling planet, planet moves into Sagittarius. And so now we're we're starting to go full on Sagittarius mode. Uh, but uh, we'll talk more about that. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that in the weekly readings. Uh, on the 27th, uh, the, the full moon is going to, we have a full moon in Gemini. All right. So uh, this is really interesting. Now, uh, if you want, like I said, think back to what happened around June 17th, 18th, uh, because this is, you know, uh, corresponds to that new moon in Gemini that we had around that time. You could see something come to culmination. There's going to be a lot of things illuminated around this time, um, especially because Mercury is going to square Neptune on this day as well. So there's definitely something coming to completion, but there may be some fogginess around it. And it's going to feel a little like what is going on. So just know the facts. All right. Just know the facts. Uh, you, Mercury is a planet of communication. Remember, I said Mercury in Sagittarius is kind of silly and goosey. Um, but it's and it's like uh just like really big ideas very optimistic but mercury wants logic it doesn't want like this uh kind of like it's just anyway i'm going to talk about more in the um and the weekly readings but we do have a full moon in gemini and that is your third house of communication all right so uh really big time to just uh, be very very uh aware of the way that you're communicating around this time. Okay. So with that said, let's see what's going on for you. There's a lot going on the last week with all the Pluto sextiles and, you know, the sun and Mars moving into Sagittarius and the full moon in Gemini. So let's see what's going on for you for the last week of November. Oh my God. Aries, this is the first time. This is the first time in my like ever that any sign has gotten all four nights, all four nights, 
Oh my goodness. This is a who this is a one of like come on, Aries. This is a milestone. Like this has never happened in any of my readings. And I've been doing this a long time. All four nights. Remember, I said from the beginning, take action. The magician in your challenge area. And then with these nights coming up, I'm like, okay, Aries, you got to take more action than before. Now you got all four nights. Nights are active. They're very active. They're the most active out of, you know, the, uh, the, the court cards, the minor cards. Listen, you, that's your sign. You got to take action, but it looks like a lot of y'all will. Again, a lot of y'all are just going to naturally feel it. You're going to feel it. Once you tap into your intuition, you're going to feel it. But oh my goodness, Knight of Swords. Remember I said that full moon in Gemini is all about the, uh, you know, uh, with Mercury and Sagittarius, but then all the full moon Gemini, uh, in your third house of communication and whatnot, logic. And there you go. You just got the Knight of Swords the last week. Okay. Which is all about action in communication, in logic, in like, truth like nothing but the truth but also being very bold and courageous and just going after the things that you want like getting out of that headspace where you know there's this little voice telling you that you can't you can and you will oh my goodness you just got all four nights ah oh my gosh this has never happened before oh my goodness okay so um yeah aries you're good you're absolutely good. Just take action. Literally, with the four knights showing up, that is the biggest sign. Do not be in the driver's seat. Or, or not in the driver's seat. Do not be in the back seat. Okay? Do not be in the back seat this month. All right? Take action for what you want next in your life. For the things that you're working on. on for your In your path to enlightenment. For the things that you know is going to help you ascend in whatever you, wherever you are in your life right now. Okay? Um, take that action. That's going to make all the difference. Especially when you trust your intuition. That really helps. Okay? And with all this Neptune activity is... Oh my goodness, you have a rare, this is just, yep, I, yep, okay, so you, you, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good, you are gonna feel a lot of uh, progress this month, there's gonna be a lot that happens, um, unless you don't take action, but I feel that you will, especially now that you've seen the four nights pop up in your reading, oh my goodness, if you don't take action, then then you're it's you're going to be stuck in the back seat of that car all right so uh and it's in you know some weird town <laughs> that car is in some weird town all right so you got to take action all right Aries, you're amazing. Thanks so much for being here. If you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. And uh, if you're a subscriber, thank you so much for being here. Y'all are amazing. I'll see you next week. Okay, bye-bye.